Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sip and Stitch. How are y'all doing? It's Friday. So happy it's Friday. <laughs> I hope y'all are all doing well. Let me give a shout out to, I see a lot of people are here already. Hey, Shayna. Hey, Delia. Jody and Cece, Star and Liz. Thank y'all so much for joining tonight. I hope y'all are all doing well. I'm going to give a few minutes and give people time. So, hello. If you are new here, my name is Carly Bell, and I like to do machine embroidery tutorials. And we get together every other Friday night here on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page. And we do a live tutorial from start to finish. And we bring our favorite beverage of choice, and we call it Sip and Stitch. So, Hello to any newcomers tonight. I'm so happy you're here. Hi, Wendy. Hope everyone's doing good. Um, I don't know if I have a few friends. Um, we have Khan and Brenda and Carol. I'm not sure if any of them are with us tonight, but they usually help with being uh, moderators so that um, if you have any questions along the way and I don't see them as I'm working. They will try and bring them up later whenever I stop and say, does anyone have any questions? Now, if they are busy tonight and not able to come, just if you don't get your answer question, I will stop throughout tonight's tutorial and say, does anyone have questions? Go ahead and just repeat your question again so I can see it. Worst case scenario, put it in the comments below the video. Um, I know on Facebook, everything's on comments, but on YouTube, there's a, a different comment section. Put it there, and I'll try and answer it later. Oh, Khan's here. Hey, yay, Khan's here. <laughs> All right, so I hope everyone's doing good. It's Friday. I'm happy. It's April, and I, I am terrible because, oh, there's the April Fool's joke. My camera goes out. Hey, it joked me. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, I'm no good at April Fool's jokes. Um, I... I I got my kids one time and they actually believed me. But this morning, the first words out of Abigail's mouth was, I mean, like they, we wake up at 530 in the morning. They are, it takes forever to wake them up. And I mean, the first words out of Abigail's mouth was, mom, I don't feel good. And I'm just like, oh, no. And, uh, and she goes, April Fool's. I mean, like 530 in the morning, she, she was ready to go. And then Elise started and Elise tells you April Fool's before you even answer. Like if she tells you something, she gives you no time to react. She immediately says, Hey mom, I did this, this, this. April Fool's right away. <laughs> so <laughs> kids are enjoying April Fool's day. Um, I think the, some other teachers at school got them pretty good today. Um, but I am no good at April Fool's. I was trying to think of something all day today to tell y'all, like, I don't, I can't come up with nothing. So whatever. <laughs> but I hope you are having a good April Fool's Day and you got some good um, rises out of your friends and family um, and nobody got you too good. So let's see. Yay, I see Brenda's here too. Hi, Brenda. All right. So a couple things. I finally remembered for once. I I'm using this new software for, um, let's see, where am I? Doo -doo. I'm using this new software to do the live videos and there is a giveaway thing in it and I always forget to do and I finally remember today. So tonight, if you comment, like, share, thumbs up, all those good things, you are automatically entered into the drawing. And at the end of the night, I am going to, and I don't, well, um, I'm going to have a giveaway. And the giveaway is going to be one free month to my membership club. And the membership club is called CF Fans. It's a, a partnership I have with Creative Fabrica. And in the CF Fans membership group, we do a live Zoom class every month. And you get a free embroidery design by me every month, along with a few other like behind the scenes things going on in my craft room. And we do some digitizing um, tutorials using Stitch Artists. So free month of the CF fans membership group to a winner tonight. And if you're already a member and you win, then I'll refund you a month. <laughs> All right. 
So yay, I'm so glad everyone's here. Um, super excited about tonight's project. Um, I've been having a bunch of these in my embroidery design folder on my computer but I had yet to actually make one. And I was like, okay, we need, we need to do this. We need, we need to get it done and we need to show everyone else how to do it. And we are gonna be making these super cute bag tags from um, Applique Alley. And Applique Alley is a beautiful website, tons of designs. They have so many things that make them special. Um, one of them is bag tags. And essentially what a bag tag is, is when you can embroider something whether it be, uh, and depending on the machine you have, you know, lots of the times on our flatbed machines, it's really hard to embroider bags and, um, and other hard to hoop items. So the solution to that is to make a bag tag. And this is a completely in the hoop project. And it, it has a little space for a hole to get punched out and you could put some ribbon on it and you can tie this. So tonight's project is to tie to an Easter basket in case you have a cute basket but it doesn't have like one of those cloth liners on the inside that you can stitch a name on or you can't put, it's not something that you can embroider. It could be a wicker basket. You can put this on the basket for the kids. So I made one this week for my daughter, Abigail. I, I, I learned things making it and I'm gonna I'm a shoot all those pointers to you tonight. And one of the things, the main things I don't like about the one that I made was I chose a horrible color for her name and her name doesn't stand out. So learned my lesson. We're going to do better tonight. But um, that is tonight's project. Now, this is from Applique Alley. And the lovely ladies there were so kind to offer y'all a coupon code. So let me put that picture up. Here it is. So... Um, there is a link to this particular design in the description box below, and you can use it to go to the website. Um, and today, actually, they have a, a better coupon, so you, it, save this for, for later. But today, she has a 50% off sale for April Fool's Day. So you can't use this and that. So if you buy the design today, April 1st, you'll automatically get 50% off. But if you're watching the replay and are not able to get it until this weekend or, or early next week, you can use the coupon code Carly Bell to save 45% off your entire order with the exception of her new release designs, which she already always discounts at 50%. And this coupon is good through next Wednesday night, April 6th at midnight, I think central time. So go fill up your cart and get all the designs. So the things I'm going to recommend if you are new to Applique Alley, bag tags. They got them for every holiday, every occasion to put on kids' school bags, to put on sports bags, dance bags, everything. I have some dancing ones in my um, on my computer I still need to make. Um, they also are adorable as gift tags on presents. Um, so, and this is a nice keepsake then the kid can put on whatever they want. Another thing that I love by them, and we're going to have to do this for another sip and stitch in the future, is their applique fonts, applique alphabets, and something they called snack cakes. And it's a way to really personalize a kid's name on a particular theme. So, for instance, if you're making an Easter shirt, um, you can use the their alphabet, um, applique alphabet, and then these little cute... Um, applique designs to incorporate either to sit on top of letters or to replace letters. Um, they have an adorable Easter one with where you could put bunny ears where it looks like the bunny ears are coming out the top of the letter. Replace um, a letter with a carrot, um, an egg for an O, things like that. Super duper cute. If you join their Facebook group, you will see tons and tons of um, examples of what people do with snack cakes. The possibilities are endless. So that's what you should fill your card up with when you go to Applique Alley. <laughs> All right. Hey, Terry. Oh, lost sound. Lost sound? Can you hear me? It says it's working. Doop, doop, doop. Let me know. It's back. Good. Okay. All right. So y'all know I'm good with um, batteries dying over here. So I'm paying attention. I got extra batteries on, on my table. <laughs> Okie dokie. So. Let's get started. Um, tonight I'm using 
the design comes in as little as four inch. So this is four by four hoop friendly. I'm making the five inch version and the, the, the size is the height of it. I think it even, it goes up to like seven inches tall. Um, so when you get the design, you can four, five, six, seven. Um, this is a five inch that I'm doing tonight and I'm doing it in my five by seven hoop. And tonight I'm going back to my OG PE 770 embroidery machine. My first embroidery machine, it's going on 10 years old and um, still works like a champ. And uh, this is an older version of the PE 800. So if you have the PE 800, my machine is just a little older version of it. Everything's the same, except I don't have a color screen. So the, the PE 800 is much nicer in that it has a color screen. So, all right. Um, Shayna, thank you, girl. You didn't have to do that. Um, so, okay. You got me flustered now. Thank you, Shayna. She, um, she sent, what do you call that? A super chat on YouTube. That's very sweet of you. Um, okay. So that's what we're doing. Let's talk about stabilizer. All right. I think Carol, so Cindy X for Carol is Carol's been having trouble with her internet. So I don't know if she's going to be joining us tonight. Okay, how do I switch cameras? Where are we? Here we go. All right, so table, five by seven hoop. Now, let me give you a closer look of the bag tag. You can see that this has a finished satin stitch finished edge, right? And on the back, it is finished. And you see my satin stitch goes around the whole thing, okay? So to accomplish this really nice finished look, you are going to want some sort of wash away stabilizer. Now, usually when I say wash away, people think of the clear water soluble topper. That is good, but it is not quite strong enough for this project unless you did maybe a few layers of it. There is another product called Badge Master that is like a super thick water soluble and it's clear you know it has the same look of the one we use as topper all the time but much stronger i have what's called a woven wash away so it kind of looks and feels like tear away but it is a wash away and it it dissolves in water so when we're done with the project we just have to wet the edges and you get a really nice clean finish so and because this is an in the hoop project, all we're doing is hooping stabilizer. So I love in the hoop projects. Creating something from scratch. I hate these scissors. I'm not using those scissors. <laughs> all right. So, so if you have Badge Master, you can use that. If not, get some wash away stabilizer, woven wash away. And you'll see like in the description of it, it will say used for free. Sometimes it's called that it's used for freestanding lace. So it's really good for in the hoop projects that need a clean finish. I'm going to tighten it up too much. Okay, so make sure your hoop is good and tight. If you're new to hooping anything, you'll notice at least with the brother and the baby lock hoops, you want to make sure your hoop is in the right orientation and they have these little tiny arrows. My hoop is really dirty. Uh, there's a little arrow here and there's a little arrow there. You want to make sure those line up. That's how you know your hoop, the inside of the hoop is, is um, connected correctly. So let's see. Cindy says she uses two layers of water soluble topper. Um, for these kinds of projects. And that's great. Let's see. Um, Christine said she has the sulky Fabri, Fabri, Fabri Solvi. I think that is the same thing as what I'm using. The kind I'm using, I want to say is the World Wonder brand off of Amazon. I had a big roll of that. Okay. Um, 
All right, Terry says it's called Ultra Solvy Heavy Weight. Yep, so any kind of wash away, and I find the heavier weight of it is better for this particular project. But don't worry, we are going to reinforce this because this bag tag is all just fabric, cotton woven fabric, okay? So there's some things that we're going to do to reinforce it so that it's not super flimsy, right? We want it to be on the stiffer side like a tag. And there's some things I'm going to show you what we're going to do tonight. So we're ready to start stitching. All you need to do is hoop that stabilizer. So now let's go over to In Brilliance. And I know that I've had some trouble with this in the past. And so I want to show you the solution for it that I finally figured out after talking to Lisa Shaw. <laughs> but here is In Brilliance. Now, um, I had trouble for the longest time within the hoop projects at, and adding a name. Something would get messed up and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So here is the design and you can go and see. The great thing about having in Brilliance is that I can see all the steps um, before I start stitching. Cause when I had, when I was only using this machine I'm using tonight, you can't see anything on the screen. It's, it's black and white. It's super small. It's hard to tell sometimes what step you're on. So I would always have in brilliance open on the, um, on my laptop right next to the machine. So I could be like, okay, the next step. So this is the placement stitch. This is the tack down stitch for the, um, background. There's a placement for the frame tack down for the frame placement for the white part or the, the skin part of the bunny um, tack down for it uh, for the, the placement for the ears. So like this just lets me, I like to kind of analyze a design before I start so that I know what I'm getting myself into. So I could see all of these pieces of applique and there's the nose tack down for the nose. So once it's done with all those applique pieces, now it's going to do all the pretty finished satin stitching. And then the last part, which makes it the end, the hoop part is attaching the back. These last three steps are what finishes the back. So I want to add a name to this. And what I used to do is I would just um, press your font button here. We're making one for Elise tonight. I would change the font. I think, what did I do tonight? I have one already loaded on my machine. I can't remember. I think it was this font. This is from Creative Applique Balloon. Um, I wanted to show you. So the remember we were talking about snacks, snack cakes a, a minute ago. This is some of the cute um, applique alphabets that they have. And then I have the school snack cakes, but it's not going to work like that. But um, that's something we're going to have to do for another sip and stitch. But I think for a font tonight, I was going to use this one. So I'm going to put that right there. Okay. But you see, when you're looking at the design, um, it's the last step. But in reality, you don't want it to be the last step because then it, you would see it, the bobbin thread of it on the back of your design, right? You want it to actually be before it does those last steps. So sometimes, and, and sometimes it's just easier to do that. I would save this loaded on my machine just like this, where it's the last step. But when I got right here, after before I started adding the back to it, I would use my machine to jump ahead stitches, jump ahead steps until I got to the name. I would stitch the name and then I would back up and go here. But I wanna show you how to do it in Brilliance um, without messing up your design. So all you do is, click the name and drag it right there. Now notice when I do that, it, it split it now into three designs. It has all of this, the letters, and then this is the last three steps. Now I used to save this and go to my machine. And when I went to my machine, the first step, you would have like a bunch of piece, pieces missing. Like it, it would be to wear only a tiny little piece right here stitched and that's it all the rest of it was deleted and there were lots of steps all of the applique steps were messed up and that is because usually in brilliance has this feature called um uh remove hidden stitches right here and if you have it 
set up in your preferences to automatically always remove hidden stitches when you save your design, it's going to, when you get to your machine and you open it, it's going to be all messed up looking. And so I'm going to show you how to fix that. This little yellow folder right here is the um, preference window. So click that, but wait, my computer is not showing it. Let me remove. Stop this screen share. Now I have to show you this window. Okay, so you should be seeing this little window now. Okay, um, this is your preference window. This is where you go and you pick your hoop and there's all kinds of things here. What you wanna look at is jumps and overlaps. You want to make sure this box here is not checked. Remove overlaps when saving stitch files. You don't want it to automatically remove hidden stitches. So make sure that is not checked and then apply, okay. And wait, let me go back. Um, stop, share. Okay, now when you save this stitch file, it's everything's going to come out right and it's going to be in the order that you wanted to stitch where the name is before the last couple steps. So I hope all of that makes sense. Is there any questions about adding a name to the design in Imbrilliance? Okay. Okay, any questions about adding the name to the design and in brilliance and then moving the name where it's before your last couple steps? Let me know if there's any questions. All right, and Brenda had a good point. She always prints the design out from in brilliance and then uses that. I do that sometimes as well, especially when I'm working on my multi-needle machine. Um, I print it out so that I could see all the steps and know what colors I want to stitch for each part. It does help a lot. Also, if you are a planner, like I am planning for this video to show y'all tonight, when you print out the, the uh, printout on Imbrilliance, it prints true to size. So I used to wait and cut all my pieces of applique as I stitched them out to be just the size that I needed. However, when you do the printout, I can use that piece of paper now as a guide to be like, okay, this is how big of a piece of fabric I need for the front of the design and the back of the design and for the ears and the face and all that stuff. So that helps me as a guide to cut out all my pieces of applique fabric ahead of time. All right. So, um, if we don't move the name, do we need to do that at all? Diana asked. Um, if you leave the name as the last step, no, you don't have to worry about removing the, the removing hidden stitches part. It should, everything should save fine. But then when you're on your machine, you have to navigate and skip steps to the name and then go back to the previous part. Doing good, thank you. I just came, came back home from riding my bike. Ooh, did you ride your bike with the one with no training wheels? Good job. I did so good. I'm so proud of you. All right. <laughs> Elise rode her bike with no training wheels, guys. Okay. Um, Yes, Angela made a good point. The stitch simulator is a very um, helpful when doing applique. All right. Ooh, and Kimberly, scan and cut helps with saving fabric. Yeah, because you can um, open up the applique the files on your scan and cut and cut out the pre-cut the shapes. So yeah, all of those are really good things. Good points, guys. Okay, so... Now that we have the design ready with the name added to it, I have it uploaded to my machine already. I have my hoop with my stabilizer, so let's finally get stitching. <laughs> okay, so here is my 
PE770. So the biggest hoop on this machine is a five by seven. And one thing that is tricky about this machine is the hoop snaps on. So they have like two brackets right here and it snaps. Always make sure I do this to make sure I have it snapped on good because if it's not snapped good, this will pop right off and then your, your design will get messed up. So make sure it's on there good, okay? Um, yay, I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna tell you, Elise, y'all said woohoo. <laughs> okay, um, Chantel, she wants to know if I have opened my scan and cut. The answer is no. <laughs> It is still no, it is still sitting in a box. I have way too many things that I'm trying to do at one time and I have not made it a priority to open my scan and cut, but maybe in the summer I'll finally get to it <laughs> if I ever get some time off. But okay, so this is on. I've already uploaded the, I have, this is my USB stick right here. I, um, I found the design and it's ready to go. So on my machine, it's showing what step is first. So the first step is the outline uh, for the placement of the, the outline of the design. So another thing, all of the first lots of stitches are all piecing the applique. Now, all the final stitches on this design is all satin stitching. So that means you're not going to see your tack down stitch, your placement stitch. It's all going to get covered up with a satin stitch. So it doesn't matter what color you use. So the first satin stitch that gets stitched out on this design is this frame that's purple on this, on this tag. I, the, the, I picked kind of like the opposite color scheme for this one. So everything that's teal on this one will be purple. And everything that's purple is going to be the mint kind of color. Um, so my first thing that's going to get a satin stitch in, on this one will be for this fabric and it'll be mint. So I went ahead and loaded my mint thread on and I'm going to do all with that mint thread. Let's see. Um, oops. Uh, hi, Ann. Let's see. So Buster um, said, can you use a Cricut if you don't have a scan and cut? Yes, you can use a Cricut. I think um, Maker has the nice rotary blade. And then I have a Silhouette Cameo 4 that has a nice rot rotary blade for cutting out fabric. Okay, so I have my mint thread loaded. So that's just a pointer. If you're working on a flatbed, single needle machine, you don't need to keep changing threads for the applique. You can just load one and go. So I'm going to lower my presser foot my light screen now and go. Okay, so let's talk about fabric. I cut, pre-cut all my pieces of fabric. I also lined the back of all of them with heat and bond light. And this is kind of, um, it, it works as a stable, as a interfacing, but it also allows the fabric to adhere to whatever's underneath it with an iron. So, and I'm going to show you that little process. Actually, let me turn my iron on. Um, no, not this one. This one. Okay. Let me have that ready and going. Okay. So that's one thing. That interfacing under the fabric is going to help your tag be a little bit stiffer. Another thing that's really going to help, especially on the front side of the design, is, this is a lot of stitching going on here, a lot of satin stitching. Um, you want to make sure that it's stabilized well. So on top of having the heat and bond, I'm going to peel this off. Okay, so this is ready to go. I also have some pieces of cutaway stabilizer. This is regular medium weight cutaway. Now... This is a little different because I didn't want a hoop cut away because I want a clean finish edge. But if we treat the piece of cutaway like it's a fabric and we're going to trim it in applique, we can do this. So one option would be to go ahead and adhere your fabric to the cutaway, which if my iron is hot, I can quickly do. 
and that will make sure it looks nice. We can, yes, just adhere it to the cutaway and then it's all gonna get trimmed like a piece of applique. All right, and then because it's nice and stiff, I don't think you need to do anything to um, tape it or adhere it to this wash away. So I'm just going to get these scissors. Okay, I'm just gonna slide this on here. And so what you're doing is you are just covering up your placement stitch completely. All right, and I've just got something here to hold to hold this so I don't put my fingers under the needle, but I have my placement stitch completely covered up. Make sure the top looks good. Yep, okay, now I'm going to start stitching. And now this is the tack down stitch. All right, so now we have that extra stabilization from the cutaway, but it's not gonna mess up our clean finish edge. So I'm gonna pop my hoop off now. And I don't know if you can see, cause the mint thread, it's hard to see the outline, but let's switch over to the craft table now. Okay, so it's hard to see, but there is mint stitching there of the outline of the bunny, okay? And I'm now remember I have fabric and cutaway. I'm just using my applique scissors and treating it all like it's one piece. And I'm trimming as close to that stitch line as possible. It's important to have good applique scissors. If you find your scissors are not that great, one option would be to just lay the cutaway down, stitch, sorry if it's blurry, um, lay the cutaway down, stitch it, trim it, then repeat the same step and lay your fabric down. And then there are cases where some of the other bag tags, oop, touching my, my iron with my elbow, <laughs> with my arm. Um, some of the bag tags, the first stitch might not be the complete outline. If that's the case, skip to one of the last set of stitches where it's the um, complete outline to finish the back and stitch that first with your cutaway. So then you have that good stabilization and that's also gonna help make your bag tag stiff. Um, do you just need to use cutaway because you're using water soluble to hoop the design? Yeah. So I didn't want to hoop cutaway because then you're not going to get the pretty finished edge because like you see the satin stitching goes around the front to the back on here. If you hooped cutaway from the get go, you're not going to be able to cut the cutaway as close to that stitching to get a nice clean edge. But now that we're trimming it on top of the wash away, the satin stitch edging is going to go all around it. Another option is to make this project using not uh, sticky or heat transfer vinyl, but what I call embroidery vinyl or the kind of like faux leather that you'd make like bags with. There's lots of in the hoop projects that you can do with um, embroidery vinyl. And this is one of them. And if you did that, you wouldn't need the extra stabilization, I don't think. And your bag, your tag would be nice and stiff. All right. Oh, good night, Con. Thanks for coming tonight. Oh, Con, I'm going to be in Baton Rouge on, um, on Sunday. I'm going to have to call and see if we can meet up. Abigail has another dance competition. <laughs> so we'll be in Baton Rouge all day on Sunday.
Okay, sorry, I'm a little bit of a slow cutter here. I just want to make sure I get nice and close to that stitching. There we go. So that is me cutting as close as I can to that stitch line there. And it has that cutaway underneath. So now that is the back of the design. So now this is going to be a rinse and repeat from now on on placement, tack down, trim, placement, tack down, trim. So if you're not familiar with applique, those three steps are for every piece of fabric on this. So we're going to go back to the machine and let's see, the next is going to be the frame. Okay, let's go. All right, see sometimes when the hoop is in a different spot, it's hard. There we go. Now it's not coming off. Okay, and lower the presser foot and go. All right, Brenda has a really good question. What's the difference between HTV and embroidery vinyl? So think of embroidery vinyl as faux leather. So this is a roll of embroidery vinyl. And you see it's this really pretty rainbow hologram reflective. It is thick, okay? And it, this can, it comes in a variety of, of thicknesses. Um, I have some that are really thin and then I have some that are super thick. This one I th I'd say is thick, thick to medium, uh, medium to, to thick. Um, and the back of it, it, it almost feels like a uh, felt. Um, there are also some that has like a canvas back. So the backings usually don't matter to me. It just depends on where you get them from, on what kind of backing they'll have. But this is what I call embroidery vinyl. It does not have any adhesive layer on this side. And you don't use any heat and bond or anything on it. Um, HTV is heat transfer vinyl. And it has adhesive on it. And um, it is usually much, much thinner. Okay, so this is my piece for the, the name frame. I took the heat and bond off the back. And now I am just laying it right on top of where my placement stitch was. And go. All right. There's other things that you can use. So not only do I have a variety of embroidery vinyl, faux leather, I also have cork. I love cork. And I think cork would be a really good solution for the, the, the bag tag. I think it would look really pretty on the front or if you just use it on the back to give it some stiffness. Okay, so that's done. So let's go back to... Hey, Bethany, how are you? All right, let's go back here. Again, rinse and repeat. Okay. So name, name plate, name frame, trim. Also, when you use heat and bond on the back of the fabric, it really makes cutting it, trimming it a lot cleaner. Like you get all kind of fuzzies and everything when you trim fabric that doesn't have any interfacing on the back. Um, heat and bond makes everything a lot cleaner. Now, because there is heat and bond, I am going to go ahead and take, I have to just be careful of the stabilizer, but I'm just going to take the tip of my little mini iron here and heat down that nameplate. So now that is done. So again, rinse and repeat. Now we're going to do the next step, which is the face. I got it on there. Good. Lower and go. Okay. Um, Terry asked, where do I buy cork? My favorite cork I actually bought from Hobby Lobby. Let me see if I can go get it. It looks like cork, regular cork, but it has gold flakes in it. And I got it in like the upholstery fabric. 
section at Hobby Lobby. You see it? And this has kind of a canvas back and you can see, you know, it's, it's thicker than fabric um, and the kinds of vinyls that you use to make stickers or to iron on shirts. It's much thicker. So this is, this is great for making bags. And I think it, lots of in the hoop projects like um, keychains, snap tabs, and these bag tags. All right, so that is the placement for the face. I have this really pretty white glittery fabric. Are you going to focus, 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 focus. Nope, won't focus. Um, but I have this white glittery fabric. I'm pull the heat and bond paper off the back. What's happening? Okay. And now I just lay the fabric right on top and go. Okay, now my battery, my microphone is going dead. So hold on one second, guys. I'm going to turn this off. First, I actually caught it before it died. I am proud of myself. <laughs> okay, let's see. What? I missed it. Ann and Star. What, what are we floored about? What are we floored? I need to know the gossip. Okay. Up. All right, so that is the face. Now, because my machine doesn't cut jump stitches, I don't know if you can see there's a jump right here and I have to trim that. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. This is what Ann said. She saw um, the brother educated Jerry um, embroider on craft wood. That's amazing. Yes. And that sounds scary as well. Yeah, we need to, we, I need to see that. That's got to be cool. Okay, so I have this um, jump stitch. And so I'm going to trim it. Where's my tweezers? Tweezers are best for jump stitches. Trim here. Trim here. Okay, so now we're going to cut. I know this one's a, a bit strange because it goes all around, but we are going to cut out this bunny face. And I wanted to say too, I forgot to say at the beginning. So my, the design I picked had the bow on it because I have two girls. However, they have the same exact design with no bow if you want to make this um, for a little boy. So they do have a no bow option. I think I, I linked it on the the Sip and Stitch homepage. Okay. This one's a little tricky to get in these little tight spaces here, but that's where the little, the little tiny scissors come in handy. Okay. And I know a lot of people have trouble with applique. Um, where they'll trim their fabric, they finish it, they do the satin stitch, and their fabric is still poking out 
on the outside of the satin stitch. Just the more you practice trimming and having good scissors, the better you get at it. So just keep trying and you will get better. And another option would be just to not do anything with satin stitches and only do things with bean stitch. Because <laughs> then you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I love the bean stitch appliques. Okay. What do we have here? Piece of thread. Okay. So now we have the face. I'm going to just touch it here with my iron. And that activated that heat and bond that is underneath it. And I know I should probably should have used a fabric that wasn't so see-through because I can see my hound's tooth below my face. But hopefully once I put the nose and the eyes, it will distract from being able to see. But sometimes when I have that trouble, I'll do two layers of white fabric. But usually the heat and bond helps, but it's not right now. Okay, so back to the machine, lower. Now we're gonna do the inside of the ears. Okay. All right, so Joe asked what scissors I'm using. I'm using these, they're made by Havels. I got them from Sewing Machines Plus and they're my favorite. There was some I used to get on Amazon, but I went, we've ordered second and third pairs. They no longer work very good at all. Um, so I found this pair on Sewing Machines Plus that I like. And um, I have it linked, let's see, where is, on the Sip and Stitch homepage, which if you go to my website, carlybell.com and then slash Sip and Stitch. Also, if you just go carlybell.com, you'll see the sip and stitch at the top of the page. You can just click on it. But on there, I have a complete list of all the supplies I use tonight, including links to the scissors. And I have a discount code with Sewing Machines Plus. You can use Carly Bell as a discount code to save you 10% off your purchase. All right, so this is my pretty pink flowery fabric I'm going to use for the inside the ears. Ah, I've been wanting to try this, Bethany. She said Kimberbell's fusible backing is um, really good for preventing your fabric um, from being see-through to see if you, if you have fabric underneath it, it helps protect it. And I've heard them talk about it before, um, and I have it on my to-buy list, but I haven't bought it yet. I did buy, I do have some, what is it, SF101, Pel the Pelon, but I haven't tried that. I haven't tried that either. I think that's supposed to be similar. I have to test, I have to test and see how well it works with not letting your fabric be so see-through. All right, so there's my bunny ears. You know, she recently fell. No, she didn't fall down. She fell in love with it. <laughs> I know what you mean, Bethany. I got you, girl. Okay. Um, Sue, my small iron. I love my small iron. It is also linked on the Sip and Stitch homepage. Um, I got it from Amazon. I think they also have it at Walmart. If you need to like go in the store and buy it, I want to say Walmart usually has it. All right. So anyone joining us late tonight, I finally remembered to use the giveaway feature that I have on my, my video program. So if you comment, like, share, thumbs up, all those good things, you are automatically entered in to win one free month of my membership club um, through CF Fans. So trimmed. 
iron that down. And now we're almost done. Two more pieces. All right. Okay, that is good. Lower, go. All right, what do we have left? We have the bow and the nose. And then we're done. Hey, Norma. All right, what was that? That was the outline for the bow. Where's my bow? Okay, so this is my fabric, peeling off the heat and bond. Putting it where it goes and tack it down. Ooh, Kathy, this is a good point. So um, she asked if we've ever done any finger puppets. No, but that definitely can be done. That's really good in the hoop project. It would kind of be the same thing, except um, when you are stitching it, you put the front, you know, we have to find somebody that makes the designs. I'm sure lots of people do. I just need to find them. But it would be the same process on the front, except there'd probably never be any stitching right here. So you would have to use something like felt um, that can have a raw edge and not um, fray away like like um, cotton, um, quilting cotton. Um, and then same thing, then add the back, no stitching on the bottom and come out. That would be super cute. Yeah, we should play with that. That would, that would be good if I could have got it done before Easter. Then that could have been good to put in the Easter baskets. All right, so we got the bow. What do I have? All right. Guys, I, look at this. This is pitiful. I haven't even opened my drink. We call it sip and stitch for a reason. It's pitiful. Let me fix that right there. <laughs> I've been enjoying myself so much I haven't even taken a sip. Okay. Now we're done with the bow. Touch it with the iron. Got that down. There's some sort of thread. All right. Last piece is the nose. And then we can chat because then there'll be a lot of satin stitches and those take a little while. Okay, so back to the machine. Hoop is on good, lower, nose. Okay, <laughs> Brenda wants to know what I'm sipping. This is my favorite drink. So I got, first I gotta show you my pretty koozie my friend Amy made me. It's got my name on it. Um, and my favorite drink it's called a Malibu Splash. Good stuff right there. That is what I keep in my koozie. All right, that's the placement for the nose. My last little piece of applique, and I'm so proud of myself, I did not lose any pieces of fabric because every time I do this, a piece of fabric gets stuck to something on my craft table and I lose it. Check me out. Did not lose even the tiny nose piece of fabric. <laughs> All right, nose is done. Okie dokie. There we go. Let's trim the nose. All right, so you see I stitched all those placement and tack down stitches with my mint fabric. Now my next step is 
the um, satin stitch of this right here. And that's why I chose mint because that is the first real thread color you're, gun you're going to see. So this is what it looks like with all the tack down stitches in your, your um, pieces of applique. Now all those raw edges are gonna get covered up by satin stitching. So all the rest is letting the machine do all the work and just change in thread colors. So you can see here, it's the outline of the frame, lower and go. And so this time, I think the purple thread will stand out really nicely on that mint material for her name. I also chose a font that is a satin stitch. Like this one is a bean stitch. I don't know if you could see. Um, focus, focus, focus. There we go. Bean stitch. So I chose a bad color and it's a bean stitch, which make, makes it even hard to see. So this one should be better. Yes. Thank you, Bethany. I like all the fabric, the fabric colors too. It's really fun to sit and play and look at what you got and try and figure out what looks together. I like to lay out everything on the table, all the pieces next to each other. And then I take, then I start taking my threads and I put them on top of each piece of fabric and really see um, what looks good together. All right, so Brenda has a real good question. Um, uh, do I use pre-wound bobbins? Yes, I do. I, I have them linked. So let's, let me show you the Sip and Stitch homepage. Let me, let me show you that real quick so people know what it is. So, okay, here is my website. Um, just go to carlybell.com. And when you get there, um, this is what the homepage looks like. I still, I still have the the holiday workshop. I probably need to change that because Christmas is over. So um, one of the things you can go to if you scroll down, you see this emblem here. Also up here, it says info on sip and stitch and they got homepage and past projects. So clicking either the homepage or this will bring you to what I call the sip and stitch homepage. And this tells you we get together every other Friday night. Um, here's a link to the YouTube channel, if that's an um, easy way for you to watch. If not, I need to put a link to my Facebook page, because now we have it on both. So here is tonight's project, the In the Hoop funny bag tag. And then everything that you see that's yellow is a link. So here's a link to the machine. If you've been looking for a machine, I know they've been out of stock. Sewing Machines Plus has them in stock now. I checked the other day. So um, this is a link to the bag tag with a bow the bag tag without the bow, the wash away stabilizer, stabilizer, the cutaway I'm using, my heat and bond, my scissors, my mini iron, needles, the thread that I'm using, um, and the pre-wound bobbins. And I get these from, from Amazon and they fit all of the brother flatbed and baby lock flatbed machines. They're style A. Um, and then I'm gonna get to this when we're done is my, um, cam snap press which I'm going to use to punch a hole um, so that is the sip and stitch homepage. and like this was last um, two weeks ago we had we did the binge buddy pillow and it goes all the things so if you just keep scrolling you see all the things we've done in the past so that is how you get there and how you um, find all the supplies for the project okay so we are done with the satin stitch for the frame. So next is the outline of the bunny face. So notice I cut the thread right here. I pull it out. Well, put your presser foot up first. Pull it out the bottom and then change thread. You never wanna pull your thread out going backwards. Um, also, you can't see, but I have a thread stand. I keep on side my machine. I don't like you putting my thread here. I find it always causes trouble um, with tension sometimes or, or the thread just getting hooked up some sort of way. It doesn't like, it doesn't like my thread to put it there. <laughs> so 
Some machines work fine with it, mine doesn't like it. So I use a thread stand. Okay, so thread, needle, sewer presser foot, go. So now this is the outline of the face, which I'm doing in white since I use that glittery white fabric. Um, Joanne, how many hours a week do I craft and stitch? I wish this number was a lot higher than it actually is. <laughs> I really only get to do this when I make videos for y'all. It's, it's, it's sad. I don't get to be in here as much as I want to, but the only time I've been in here this week was to make this one as a test run and now with you tonight. I wish I could be in here every night though. I used to when my kids were younger and they went to bed earlier and a lot quicker, I would put them to bed and immediately come in here and make something before I went to bed. Um, but now I fall asleep in bed with them because I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, yay, Anne said she saw my persona. So we pan, is it this way? Yeah, pan that way. Whoop. There is my other baby, my brother persona. And then I, I, I won't show you the other side of my room right now because it's a hot mess. But I have a lot of other machines too. <laughs> But this is this is this is my OG. This is this is the original. All right, let's see. Carly, why put fusible backing on your applique pieces? So there's a few reasons. Um, this one, I would say, it's not as important as if you are putting it on a shirt. When you put applique on a shirt, it gets washed, and when it gets washed, the fabric can pucker and separate from the back of the shirt or from the other layer of fabric behind it. And that causes it to look messy. And you really don't see it until after you wash it. Um, it also, it, there are sometimes when you applique something and it didn't take nice when it's stitched on top and there'll be a bubble or a wrinkle in it. When you use the heat and bond and you, and you pass the iron on it before you do that final satin stitch, it really helps smooth out the fabric. Um, when you are when you have it on a shirt, it'll help the fabric stay nice and smooth after you wash it. It just gives it a much more finished, polished look. For tonight, I used it mainly for the interfacing so that the bag tag was a little stiffer. And also I wanted to make sure there were no wrinkles in the fabric um, after it was, it was done stitching. All right. Mm, and Lynn asked, did I use heat and bond on all the fabric? Yes, I did. I, I went ahead and ironed it on all my pieces before I started. Yes, Norma, I used some glitter fabric. It was really pretty. I actually, I got it from Walmart. Walmart, has, I've, said, I've said this before, Walmart has stepped up their fabric game. I got this came on a little mini bolt of a yard and it's hard to see, but it is glittery and it's not the kind of glitter that rubs off on you. Like I have no glitter on my hand. I even rubbed it on my black shirt. I got no glitter on my black shirt, <laughs> so it's good, <laughs> but I got that from Walmart. Hey, Emily's here. So Emily is one of the lovely ladies behind Applicate Alley. I think there are two two Emilys, if I understand correctly. And I think Emily Horn was the original. The, she's the OG Emily. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I know there are two of y'all. But thank you so much for for um, joining tonight and for giving the wonderful coupon code. Thank you. All right, checking. Um, okay, here's a good question. Any certain washing instructions if you use embroidery vinyl? So if you use vinyl, I have used vinyl on shirts. Um, and I've, I've made my daughter um, birthday shirts using it. On shirts, it, it makes the shirt stiff because it, it, is, it is thick. But I've been able to wash and just dry on low heat. The main thing is that embroidery vinyl doesn't tolerate heat well. Don't put an iron on it. 
don't put it in a high heat dryer. Um, don't put any heat and bond on the back of it. But other than that, it washes fine. I know tons of people that use embroidery vinyl when making hooded towels with the cute little design on top of the, the hooded towel. They use embroidery vinyl for that and it washes well. Um, it's another, another name for it is marine vinyl. So it's meant, it's meant to with, withstand water, um, but it doesn't like heat. Uh, and it's so funny you said this because I thought for a second there have been times where I have forgotten to remove this paper and I put the paper on a shirt and these are these are the pros of forgetting the paper on the back of the fabric um if it's a young child shirt it is now a sensory effect when they when they feel their shirt they'll have some crinkling go going on <laughs> so we can we can say that's a little added extra of a sensory effect to their shirt. And tonight, I actually thought about leaving the paper on the back to give it some extra stiffness, right? And, it, it, well, you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't crinkle this um, because it should stay stiff. But if you leave it on for the bag tag, I, all it could do is help. It, it'll help with the keeping that, that tag stiff. All right, what is next? Next is the inside of the bunny ears, which is pink. So again, cut and pull my thread through. But yes, I have definitely forgotten to peel the paper off the back and had a shirt that made some nice crinkly noises when you when you touch the applique. <laughs> Which would probably be a good idea to do that if you're making like a um a little memory, uh, what do you call those little tag blankets? The cute little blankets. Um, make it with some minky, put an applique on it, leave the paper on. There you go. All right, satin stitch on the ears. All right. Does brother make embroidery vinyl? Not that I am aware of. I'll tell you the places I get embroidery vinyl from. Um, first, where is my bag? I recently went shopping. If, if you like to go to the store, Hobby Lobby has it. And it's in a weird spot. You, it, it wouldn't be where you think it is. It's with the ribbon. Let me see. I went to Hobby Lobby a couple weekends ago. Ooh, and I'm super excited about this one. I'm going to make something cute with this. So it is in the ribbon section. And it's... Uh, it's uh, eight inch little rolls of, they'll say faux leather ribbon. So this is one, I don't know if you can see, how can we make it? Well, look at that, look at the um, kind of, what is it, herringbone embossing to it. I love this one. So I'm gonna make um, some like in the hoop zippered bags with this or some cute, um, the kind of wristlet um, keychains. You can make those in the hoop too. This would be pretty with that. This one is a clear vinyl and it has little heart confetti in it. So this would be cute to make like a little change purse with or um, a pencil case where like the back is fabric and the front is the clear vinyl. I'm super, super excited about that. I got two, I got two rolls of that. Um, and then this is a really pretty metallic gold faux leather. They have leopard, they have glitter, all that Hobby Lobby. Get it when it's 50% off. That's when I bought these. Um, so what's the normal price? This ain't the right receipt. That's only for one thing. I don't know. Um, I think, oh, here we go. The regular five, $4.99. So I got them for $2.50. And it's like two feet. Yeah. 24 inches. And they're seven, seven and a half inches tall. So that's one option. Then you got lots of choices online. There is, um, some of my favorites are My Punk Broadery. Lots of, um, Lots of beautiful stuff there. Where else? Um, if y'all are big into watching YouTube tutorials, I'm sure you know Angela Jasmina. She's one of my favorites. That's where I got this one from. She has she has two companies. She sells blanks, and then she has an uh, her first company was called Kids Custom Designs, and she has embroidery. I 
well, I don't, I haven't checked it lately. I, I don't know if she still carries it, but she used to carry embroidery vinyl, ribbon, fabric. I haven't been to her website in a long time. I don't know if she still has it, but that's Kids Custom Designs. Um, oh, another place I found when I went to the applique getaway last year. Let me get, there's a jump stitch here. Let me cut that before I keep stitching. Do, do. I don't know if it'll go over it. There's a jump between one ear to the other. So I'm just going to trim that real quick. I usually like to cut jump stitches as I see them when it's stitching and not when my project is done. In case, because sometimes if you have too many jumps, they'll be like a mess all over the place. But if you cut them as you see them, it makes cleanup at the end a lot easier. Okay, what are we talking Oh, a place I found when I went to the applique getaway last year was, what's next? The bow. The bow is mint. Um, what is it? Sweet and Sassy Blanks. Wendy and her family. Super nice. Sweet. She did um, a great tutorial on the hooded towels using the vinyl. Um, they have tons of embroidery vinyl there. So those are the ones I could think of off the top of my head. I think M Mika World is another one too, but I haven't bought from them, but people have told me about it. Lots of good places to buy vinyl. And then cork. A lot of those places all have cork as well. I know my punk, I bought cork from My Punk Broadery. I bought vinyl from Sweet and Sassy Designs. Um, all good stuff. Okay, sorry, I go off on a tangent on embroidery vinyl. I love it very much, if you can tell. <laughs> Um, okay, bye, Brenda. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yes, Bethany. She will be at Hobby Lobby this weekend. I love me some clear vinyl. Yay, Mary. She watched, um, it, was, it was a year ago already, she watched a sip and stitch on monogramming a tote bag. I'm glad you made one and it was fun. This is it, Delia, Mikkel World. I know y'all have told me about it before, but I have not purchased from it. And Lord knows I don't need to buy any more vinyl. I got rolls and rolls I'm looking at that I still need to use. <laughs> and then Amazon, of course, Amazon has everything. All right, I need to zoom in a little more here. My face stops getting in the picture. Okay. All right, so we are now stitching, it's sticking there because it's going through a lot of layers right there. Um, we are doing the satin stitch of the bow. What is after this? The whiskers. So I'm gonna show you, I have to remember, I'm gonna show you the navigating on the screen to jump ahead and back steps because I'm gonna save myself a color change on this bunny. Oh yes, Stacy, this, this was another one we found at the Applique Getaway, Glitter Bug Fairy. Super cute um, vinyl there. That's where I got some um, like Disney themed, Disney inspired um, vinyl that I love. We could do, we should have a show and tell sip and stitch one night where I just go around my craft room and I show you all my favorite vinyls and <laughs> fabrics and things. I could spend two hours doing that. <laughs> I got so much cute stuff that I hoard and I, I don't have enough time to make everything I want. Um, do I have a sample of something with vinyl? I sure do. I got a whole box of things I could show you. So, see, show and tell. You do show and tell. Okay, what's next? See, this is where it's like, it's really hard to tell what the next step is. And that's when I go to Embrilliance. And I'm like, okay, I just stitched the bow. So next is, yes, the whiskers and the mouth. But I, I have to go back and look at my Embrilliant screen to be able to see because that is just way too hard to tell, which is black, right? Okay, so we're going to cut this. Lift the presser foot. All right. 
to where we are black. Okay, so the way the design is set up is it stitches the whiskers and mouth. Then what's next? Next, I think, is this after this is the satin stitch of the nose. And then after that is the eyes, which is also black. So while I have the black thread on, I'm going to stitch the whiskers and mouth first. And when that's done, I'm going to jump ahead to the eyes while I still have my black thread loaded. So I'm always, I always look at designs and think about the way it's stitching. This has a lot of jump stitches too, so I'm going to trim all this. Um, and see how many thread changes I can save myself. Um, you know, I think about what colors I'm going to do for each step. And if there are any that I can move around and save myself from having to change my thread color so often. Because when you're working on a single needle machine, you want to do that as least as, at least as many times as possible. All right. No, Mary, this is a really cool project I want to try that I have not tried yet. The cotton rope bowl. And then, yes, you can embroider on it. That I still need to try. That is on my to-do list. All right. Brenda, I, I'm going to be there. Yes, the applique getaway in July in Dallas. Lo had loved every minute of it last year. Um, I will be there. Whether or not I'm going to teach, I haven't figured out yet. Woo! Pulling on something. Okay. Um, this is, I wanted to show you real quick. This is the, the whisker situation. So you see lots of jump stitches. So this is when like I pause and I don't want to, there's nothing. Oh, you know what's going to get? So if I just kept going, the satin stitch of the nose would go there and then it would, it would stitch in this black in some spots. That's the kind of stuff I try to prevent by trimming my jumps as soon as they're done. like some of them wouldn't be in the way at all and you can just wait and trim them all at the end but I usually just go ahead and get it done it makes me feel better Okay, so let's go back to the machine. And now let's talk about jumping ahead steps. Okay, I got that on good. Okie dokie. So I got it back on. So my next step is telling me to do the satin stitch of the nose, but I wanna skip that and go to the eyes. On my machine, I have to hit this adjust button. If you have the PE800 or you have another brother or baby lock machine, you might have this button directly on your screen, which looks like the tip of a needle with plus minus next to it. I'm sorry, I can't zoom in anymore for you to see, but it looks like the tip of a needle, the eye of the needle, and then a minus slash plus. I'm going to click that. When I click that on my machine, and it may look different on yours, like on my persona, I have more options, um, but I have a spool of thread with a minus, a spool of thread with a plus. That is going to help you to skip ahead entire steps. So each color is a step. So I can jump ahead. The tip of the needle with a minus and a plus, that's going to help you to move around individual stitches. So if you have a thread break in the middle of stitching and you re-thread, you want to back up a few stitches to make sure you're locking where that thread break occurred. You don't want to pick up and start right where it went. Or you might see some skip stitches. And you can just back up individual stitches with this, but I want to jump ahead a whole step. So I'm gonna hit plus. Now the eyes are the step that I that are that it's on, lower, and go. And then when it's done, I'm gonna back up a step and um, go back to the nose. Okay. Um, 
So, Dawn, they did have several hands-on classes at the getaway last year. One of them that I didn't do, um, but I bought the kit to do it, and I ha still haven't done it, and it's been, you know, eight months, um, <laughs> is making an in-the-hoop zippered bag from, like, candy wrappers uh, or um, any kind of wrap, uh, food wrapping. Like, I actually have an Oreo bag that I'm going to do mine with. Um, that was a hands-on class. I want to say Melissa from Designs by Little B had a, um, a hands-on class to make a snap tab or um, in the hoop hand sanitizer holder. Uh, there was another one. There was like four or five. You had to register. You had to pre-register for them. And there might have been like a extra $10 fee or something like that to do those classes. But yes, they did have them. Okay, what am I doing? I'm taking the black off. And now I'm doing the color for the nose, which is brighter pink. And all right, I'm sending the, the person that asked for an example of a project done with embroidery vinyl. I did not forget about you. I will get a moment to get, to get it. I just wanted to wait till it was stitching enough. Okay, so now I need to back up because now it's on the name. So I'm going to back up. Now it's on the eyes. Now it's on the nose. And go. Okay. All right, Mary said, can I just press the forward arrow? Not on my machine. If I just press this arrow, it doesn't do it. Hey, Kelly, I'm glad that helped you. Always trying to save red color changes. All right, have a good weekend, Star. Okay, let me go find some in some vinyl projects. I know I got some key fobs in here. Oh wait, I got some. Uh, I still got some hand sanitizer holders from last year. Here's one. Okay, this is a vinyl project. And then I got more in here. I got all kind of good stuff to show you. All right. Okay, what are we on now? Okay, now we gotta skip the eyes. Now we're on the name. Okay. Cut. Pull. And I'm doing the name in purple. And that should stand out good. It's on the name and go. All right. So uh, let me go here so it's a little easier to see. This is an example of uh, In the Hoop project where I used vinyl. And this was a pass, sip, and stitch. We did last August, I think. Um, and this is from Designs by Little B, I think. And you see it's a, it's a snap tab. It holds the hand sanitizer. And it's made with that embroidery vinyl. And the inside of it, I lined with black uh, faux leather, black embroidery vinyl so that it had a, um, a lining, but that's it right there. So that's one example. What's your knee, baby? Okay. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. All right, here's another one. Nice, I'm glad you're getting a friend. <laughs> Some girls are coming over to sleep over, yay, okay. Um, this is the faux leather, um, and this is a key fob. I actually, I did this for the applique getaway, the virtual applique getaway last fall. 
we did this as a class. Um, so if you attended the virtual one, you, you, you have access to this class on their Facebook page. But that's using faux leather. Then this was, what was this? This was my membership group, the CF Fans. Um, this was the free file for December and the, the, the Zoom class we did for December. We made this um, ornament. I used the cork. And then this is embroidery vinyl, um, the white. It's kind of, it's like a disco ball um, looking vinyl. So that's really cool. So that's some examples of things to do with embroidery vinyl. And these tags definitely can be one that you can incorporate that vinyl. If, if not for all the steps, you can do it for some of the steps. You could just do it for the background and the back. You can do it just for the nameplate, um, whatever you wanted. You can use some glitter for the nose. That would be cute. Lots of things like that. All right. Yes, Joanne said now she's going to have to go to Hobby Lobby. I, I apologize, everyone. I am an enabler. I'm very much an enabler, and I, I, I enable myself, too, so it's a problem. It's not. I'm not just messing y'all up. I mess myself up, too. <laughs> We're spending too much money. All right. Yeah, the um, the hand sanitizer are the ones that fit from Bath and Body Works, but she has other designs that fits other styles of hand sanitizer holders. Okay, I see someone talking about the nose. Yeah, I think that can be moved in brilliance. If you should be able to select just the nose. All right, the name is done. So this is the important part. This is what makes it an in the hoop projects, the last few steps of uh, adding a back to the project, right? Because we, we've got all our front stitching done. Now it's how do we add the back to it? How do we cover up all these stitches? How when I'm done, I take this out and I have a finished product. product. This is what makes in the hoop projects. And basically what we're going to do is we are going to use some tape and we are going to tape fabric. And I'm going to also add the cutaway stabilizer again on the back. We're going to tape that to the underneath side of the hoop. And that is what's going to give us our nice finished product. Now, to go the extra mile and make it look extra nice, there's a step that you can do to get a much nicer finished look. And that is changing your bobbin thread to match the color of the top thread. So my outline is going to be in purple. So before we started tonight, I took my purple embroidery thread and I wound a purple bobbin on my machine using the bobbin, the bobbin winder there. Um, you can do this for projects where you need the bobbin thread to match the top thread, or you need the bobbin thread to match, you know, whatever the back of the, the item is, um, you can use embroidery thread. It's not the same weight as your typical bobbin thread, but just for that last outline step, it's fine to use. So I am going to take my white pre-wound bobbin out and set it up here. And I'm going to take my purple bobbin that I wound and drop it in. Make sure you want, for the flatbed machines, you want to make sure it's going counterclockwise. Drop it in. Pull it through the, the thread path here. You see right where to throw it. Pull it. Now they have a little cut thing here. Don't just cut it right away. Pull a good bit out. Then cut. See, see how much I pulled out? I don't know if you see from there to there. Um, that is going to help set your bobbin tension. Now... Because I have matching threads, it's not super important for this, but I see a lot of people have trouble with their white bobbin thread and it's showing on the front of their project and, they, and they're and they not sure why. Most of the time it's because they don't have their bobbin in correctly. Either it's not going counterclockwise or they need to pull it out some, really set that bobbin tension when you pull before you cut. So there's some pointers for you with bobbin threads if you have trouble with that. Okay, so what do we have? What do we have? The back, all right? We could leave the paper. 
I'm going to go ahead and pull it, but that's an idea. All right, I have some more cutaway stabilizer. This is just going to help with keeping the, the tag on the stiffer side, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do like I did the front. I'm going to um, press my fabric to my cutaway so that it's nice and flush on it. I need to cut this first, so. Scissors. Okay, so I'm just gonna press my iron on this real quick. Nice and smooth. All right, so now I have my fabric with the cutaway stabilizer. Let's actually, let's go to the craft table so you can see this in action. Okay, fabric with the heat and bond. Now I have cutaway stabilizer ironed on the back. Now, we're gonna turn our hoop over. Sometimes you have like a lot of threads going on here and you don't want that poking out your finished um, project. So I trim anything that's like gonna poke out. All right, now, um, if you wanted to go the extra mile, you can put some heat and bond here so that your front and back really connected together, but I don't think it's, it's super necessary. Um, and I'm just gonna place this on top and I'm gonna use my handy dandy. I have some, this is paper tape I got from Kimberbell. Um, this is the same as paper medical tape. Um, you can also use masking tape. I've always been a big fan of masking tape when it comes to embroidery. So it's some kind of low adhesive tape. Okay, your needle, you know, if it does stitch through it, it's not gonna gum up your needle, low adhesive. And I'm just gonna tape the fabric on the bottom back side of the hoop. And I don't push too hard because my hoop is not flush on my table here. This side is taller. So if I push too much, I might push my stabilizer out of place. I turn it over, now it's nice and flush on the table, and now I really rub in my tape to make sure um, the fabric stays and is good. Okay, so that's it. So we're gonna do that, and we're gonna put it back on the machine. Okay, and the next step is, it's like a tack down stitch. So it's kind of just like the first stitch we did. It is gonna tack down our back. So I'm gonna lower, and go. Oh Lord, the girls' friends are here. I hear them all screaming. Now I have four little girls in my house. <laughs> yes, Bethany. I put the stabilizer on the back just to stiffen it. That's the only reason. The stabilizer on the front really helps with um, all the dense satin stitches. Now I'm just adding a little extra layer on the back to, to make the tag a little stiffer. And like I said, if you wanted to use a piece of vinyl there instead, um, that would help. All right, so it did the tack down of the back, right? So now the back is tacked down. So let's switch over. So we have this. Where are my scissors? Here they are. Okay, now I'm gonna take that tape off. Now to get that nice clean edge, we have to trim this off, right? So it's the same as the front. We're cutting through that cutaway stabilizer and our fabric. And I'm just cutting as close to that stitch line as I can. So when the satin stitch goes around it at the end, it's gonna cover up all those raw edges. I hope my husband knows what he's getting himself into because yes, the little girls are, the girls are sleeping over tonight. We have a little house full. I have an 8 a.m. hair appointment, so I'm going to be leaving. 
probably before they wake up in the morning. <laughs> and he's going to have to deal with feeding four little girls breakfast. <laughs> I bet you he did not remember that. It's going to be fun. He's going to be mad at me in the morning when I leave. <laughs> Here he leaves. <laughs> this kid is a mess. I hear her talking to my friend. My dad said I have to share everything <laughs> and be nice and not fight. <laughs> and she's screaming. All right. All right, sorry, I'm not looking at the chat right now, but I'm going to go back and look at everything when I'm done. Make sure all these steps make sense to y'all. Okay, so remember earlier we talked about, so what I'm doing tonight works really well with this particular bag tag design. There may be other bag tags where the first step doesn't cover the whole tag. The first step might just be a plate at the bottom, right? If that's the case, skip ahead to this step where it does the whole outline at the end. Do that as a first stitch and do it two times. First as a placement and then as a um, tack down of just your cutaway stabilizer. Trim it and then start at the beginning of the design. So I hope that makes sense as far as... Um, how to make the stabilizer work for any design, okay? All right, so now we are done. So the next step is the actual nice satin stitch. So this is the important part where your bobbin thread matches your top. And then I'm gonna show you another trick now to make sure. Now you notice, sometimes I have trouble, oops, wrong camera. Okay. Sometimes I have trouble when I do in the hoop projects on the back side, like having a lot of, of nesting going on um, or um, like just a clump of thread that happens sometimes with the back of, uh, not these, this one's the one that gave me trouble, of projects. So the trick to prevent that from happening to the back of your bag tag is this. All right, so we're going to load our hoop. Okay, I see my next step is the satin stitch outline. All right, I'm going to pull my thread. Pull it. Hold it. I'm going to press needle down and needle back up. When I do that, it pulls the bobbin thread up. There's my bobbin thread. So now I have two pieces of thread pulled out. Okay? I'm going to hold that, lower the presser foot, start stitching. And I'm just going to hold it out the way. See what direction. And when it goes a little bit, I'll pause my machine and now I'll cut this. That's going to give you a nice clean back for your design that you won't see a bunch of nesting or anything like that happen on the back. So now that's going to take a little while to stitch. So I'm going to go and check all of the um, comments now. Sorry, I missed a lot. Let me back up here. Okay, I remember that. Um, what needle, so Brenda said, what needle would you use for embroidery vinyl? I still continue to use my 7511. Um, if it happens to be extra thick, uh, like marine vinyl, you might want to switch to, um, what is it, 8012? A little bit thicker, but just remember, especially when you're working with the vinyl, you're going to see the puncture marks of the needle um, in the vinyl. So if you go with a thicker needle, you're going to see larger puncture marks of your, of your threading. But typically, the, my 7511 works fine. And you, I even still keep the ballpoint when I don't even change it to a sharp. It works. Um, 
So Dawn said sometimes she has trouble with using the masking tape or painter's tape. I think the, the main thing that helps me a lot is so I gently put it when I have it turned upside down, right? I gently put the tape on it. But then I turn it over to where it's right side up and I know the bottom of my hoop is flush with my table and then I really press and rub. So I think that might help you, Dawn. Another thing is you can use as a little extra um, some temporary spray adhesive. That might be an option. Um, and then there's always an option if you do it well outside of the sewing fields, like if you put a big old piece, you can use straight pins and just pin it to your stabilizer but use pins that have really small um, heads on them so that, uh, sorry, you can't see that, but um, really small heads because it is gonna be underneath the machine, underneath the, um, the hoop. Ooh, this is a good one. Cynthia said, did I not add craft foam? No, but that is a really good option. I also thought about adding, bat, uh, adding batting, like qu uh, quilting batting, I thought about adding that as a um, as a test run too. Just some some batting would help give it. Now, the foam, the like flexi foam, like uh, that you use a lot, a lot of people use it when making bags. Um, that's also a really good idea to make your tag um, more stiff, more stable. <laughs> All right. Um, so Kathy has a really good question. So nomenclature terms. I personally, when doing applique, I call it the placement stitch. That's telling you where to place your fabric. Your tack down stitch, it's actually tacking down um, the fabric to the spot. And then the finishing stitch, that is what is the stitch that is either going to cover your edges or um, sometimes you just finish with the bean stitch and sometimes it's only two steps. Um, but that that is usually the three steps of applique and I think the general terminology for it. Um, what I was going to say, a basting stitch um, is also used sometimes or it can be another way to say tack down stitch, but um, a basting stitch usually has a really long stitch length and is meant to be taken out with a seam ripper when you're done with your project. Um, sometimes people, especially like I'm starting to do um, in the hoop quilting, you can baste down pieces of, of fabric um, for your quilt block, but then pull up those basting stitches when you're done. It's just meant there to hold the fabric in place before you start doing your actual embroidery on it. So I hope that makes sense. And then there's all different types of stitching. A satin stitch is what we're doing tonight. A bean stitch is what Abigail's name is, where it looks kind of like a dashed line. It's a triple pass uh, straight stitch. There's a blanket stitch. There's a zigzag stitch. Um, there's lots of different styles of stitching. Um, let's see. Let's see. Diana said she always worries that the tension won't be right when she winds a bobbin. Um, so, yeah, pre-wound bobbins really help with preventing tension problems. Um, there have been times where I have wound my own bobbins. I wound my own bobbins for years before I finally broke down because I, I thought pre-wound bobbins were just too expensive. They're worth every penny, every single penny. <laughs> um, and I mean, it's only like $25, $30 for a box. I've had the same box for years, years, and I barely put a dent in it. I mean, I've, I put a dent in it, but it, it, it comes with so many of them. Um, so pre-wound bobbins really, really help because there are times when you wind a bobbin yourself and you can see it in that purple one I did. Like it doesn't always wind perfectly. With these, this is pre-wound. This is wound perfectly. Let's see if it focus, 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 focus. I mean, like really, you see how smooth and perfect that edge is? 
sometimes when you wind them yourself, it's bumpy and not right. The pre-wound ones are done really well. Okay. Um. All right, so here's another uh, answer to, to Kathy's question. Each of those steps, the placement and the tack down, your machine should stop. And that is because in the design, those steps are set as a different color thread. So like when you open it in in brilliance, it will say, the placement stitch is red and the tack down stitch is blue. And that's what's telling your machine to stop and not keep going and stitch something. So that's why your machine may tell you to change the thread for every step. But when it's something that's going to be hiding under satin stitches, you don't need to change it. Yes, the, the heat and bond really helps with keeping... When you trim all that fabric, it keeps the edging of the fabric nice and stays cut, like a clean cut. The heat and bond really helps with that. Um, yes, Melissa, um, nesting can be a problem for a few different reasons. And one of the number one is you have debris down in your, under your bobbin, under your bobbin casing. So the best thing to do is take all your bobbin, like you pull out the bobbin, you pull off this little gray plate under here, and then you can pull out what's the black bobbin case and then get you a little uh, brush and get out any lint down there. They also make little fancy tiny um, attachments for your vacuum where you can try to vacuum it out. So that is something um, that you can do. All right, we are done with the satin stitch going all the way around. There is a last stitch that is optional, and that is a white bean stitch going through right the middle of the satin stitch. And I think it gives it a really nice finished look. So what I'm going to do is take my hoop off the machine. And remember, I had the purple bobbin. So if I want the white dashed line in the middle of my purple satin. I want it to be white on this side too. I'm gonna switch back to my white bobbin. So I'm taking my purple one out and put my white one back in. So again, I've loaded it counterclockwise, pulling along the path and I pull a good 12 inches out to make sure I have it, the tension is set good. All right, and then I also need to change my top thread to white. I'm listening to the girls talk. My girls have a playroom right outside of my craft room. Uh, it's like a little bonus room, and it's, it's their playroom. I just hear them talking. Come on. Okay. All right, load this back. And we're going to do that same little trick to keep that, that bunching and nesting in the back. I'm going to hold my thread, needle down, needle up. Didn't go through. Okay, let's do it. Needle down, needle up. Nope. It keeps pulling it. Let me try to do this. No, it won't come up. One more time. There we go. There, I got it. Okay, pull my bobbin thread up. And now, now it's going to do that bean stitch right in the middle 
of the satin and before it goes too far because it's kind of caught in the presser foot there when I do that. I'm going to stop it and trim it and go. All right. I'm sorry, Sherry, I missed. What method are you talking about? The, um, the pulling up the bobbin thread like I just did? Yeah, you should be able to do that on any machine by just pressing that needle up and down button. What size did I cut my fabric pieces? I cut them to, I had already stitched one out. So I had kind of like a, a guide to say, okay, I need, you know, this mint cub fabric. I need it to be a little bigger than this and so on. But an easy way to do that is to just print out the design in, uh, in Brilliance. You can just go to file and print and it will print out a true to size a picture of the design and that will show you exactly what size you need all your applique pieces to get and then if, if you don't want to do any of that you can just stitch the placement stitch then I'll take the hoop off the machine put it on my craft table with a piece of fabric and cut a piece of fabric that's just big enough to cover that placement stitch okay Brenda said she had some pre-wound bobbins and when she uses them, the thread breaks all the time. Um, and you're, you're sure, Brenda, that this is only when you use pre-wound? And another thing to look at, because usually thread breaks are caused up here. Um, if there, There's also a case that your bobbin tension could be too tight. Look at the underneath of your, of your work. I don't have an example of it because everything I got is finished. But... Um, Look at the underneath of your work and see that you have three equal columns when you look at your bobbin stitch, like the yellow, for instance. Like you want it to be a third yellow, a third white bobbin, a third yellow. Check your bobbin tension. You might need to adjust it. And you do that actually on the bobbin case itself. All right, we are done. Now we just got to clean up. Um, yes, Krista, you can reuse a pre-wound bobbin and put in bra That's exactly what I did here. I had an empty plastic case from the pre-wound bobbin and I reloaded it with my purple thread. Yes, and this is another good point, Christine. You can buy an assortment of bobbin thread pre-wound already with a variety of colors on Amazon. You can do that. And I think it actually comes 60 weight. So it's a little bit better than the 40 weight embroidery thread that I have. Ah, I didn't know this. Okay. So, so Zola um, disagrees that we shouldn't use the pre-wound bobbin again, that it's only supposed to be for one-time use. I have, now I can't say I've, Reloaded, 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 but I have done a one-time reuse and haven't had any trouble. Yay. Okay, sorry, I'm going through all the comments. Yeah, so Sherry, with the, the um, you can do that on, like I do it on my Ricoma. Uh, you can do the needle down. I can do it on my Persona. Um, and you can also just like start and stop stitching really quickly. <laughs> and then, but you have to hold the thread and then pull it, pull it up. Yes, Angela. So on the free arm machines, like my Persona and my Ricoma, I use pre-wound bobbins, but they're different. They're different uh, style. These are style A. The kind I use in my free arm machines are style L. And yes, you can, and they have little magnets on them. All right, Diana has a good question. Um, did I get different sizes on the design or do, you, or do you have to buy each size individually? No, when you purchase the design, it comes with one, two, three, four, I think four different sizes. And it comes in every embroidery 
format. So when you open up, the, it comes zipped. You have to unzip the file, and it will have 4-inch bunny, P-E-S, 4-inch bunny, D-S-T, 4-inch bunny, J-E-F, for all the different embroidery fonts. And then it'll do 5-inch for all of them, 6 and 7-inch. So you get everything when you purchase the one file. All right. Okay, so I think I got through all the questions. Now let's go here. All right, so we are done with our bunny and here's the back. So we have some trimming to do. We have some jump stitches, but now we can take it out the hoop. Out the hoop and done. All right, and First, I'm going to trim these jump stitches. I have just a random outlier there. We had some jumps here. And this little circle is where we're going to punch a hole to put the ribbon through. And I'm going to show you my, my particular tool I have which is a bit overkill, but I had uh, I needed this press for several reasons. I love it so much. I mainly bought it for snap tabs, but they, it has so many options um, that you can use it for. All right, that is all my jump stitches. And then on the back, we have some threads. From the jumping. Okay, nice clean edge. I love it. Love the purple on the bottom. It looks nice and clean. Okay, remember this is wash away stabilizer. What I'm gonna do is take my scissors and just cut. This particular one, it tears, but I don't like the way it tears. So I'm just gonna cut close to my edge. This doesn't have to be pretty. This doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just minimizing the amount that I have to wash off because if you've ever done it with water soluble topper, you know it can get like gummy if you have like a bunch of it that you add water to. So I'm just trying to prevent that. Okay, so that is the roughed edge now. Um, and let's see, let's go ahead and punch. Let me turn my iron off. I don't need that no more. Um, and I don't want to burn myself. Let me put it over here. Okay. Before we do the edges, because it gets... When we get it wet, it's gonna get it's gonna get flimsy, but I wanna punch the hole before I do that. So I'm gonna show you my fancy smanchy smanchy hole punch. By all means, this like I said, this is a bit overkill. Um, you could simply pierce it with a seam ripper and and try to cut out a hole, but it, it can be hard to not also cut um, and and snip your satin stitch. You could do that. You could, um, if you have like a traditional little single hole punch, that might work, but the hole might be too big and you might snip your, your threads. Um, this is my Cam Snaps table press. This is what it looks like. Um, and yes, it comes in beautiful pink. And with this press, there's all kinds of attachments you can get for it. So I have attachments to do the snaps like on here I have attachments to do eyelet eyelets grommets all those things and then with that you can get these punches in several sizes so this punch is 2.5 millimeter so this does a tiny little punch which it's got a bunch of it catches um all the things that you punch on the inside here 
I need to clean mine out. Um, it's stuck. There we go. See all the little the little punches I've done with it. Um, when I did this one, I used my four millimeter punch, and it it caught. Sorry, it's blurry. Um, it caught some of my satin stitching. So tonight I'm gonna do my two point five to make sure I don't I don't trim my um I don't snip my satin stitching. But it might be it, and but then to compensate my tiny hole, I have tiny ribbon. You can also just use twine like I did for this one. Sorry, nothing's focusing. Focus, focus, focus. I think it's because of this. It doesn't like my press being too close. But I screwed in my hole punch. This is the bottom. I just put my tag there. I line it up to where my punch will be right in the middle. Yeah, it's going to be too small. I might just go ahead and use the bigger one. Punch. And I can hear it cut. Oh, no, that's good. And I have a hole. See my little hole? If I wanted it to be bigger, I could use my bigger punch. But that's going to be good for me tonight. I'm good with that. Okay, let me move this out of the way because it's not liking my focusing. All right, last step besides adding my ribbon. I have a little bowl of water here. Um, and remember, this is wash away. So I'm just taking my finger and rubbing the stabilizer and like it just kind of dissolves it. You can also dip it in there and then rub it. You can also take a spray bottle. You can submerge the whole thing in water. I'm trying not to get it all wet because I did that with this one last night and then it took forever to dry. And that's it. And then that's how you get your super clean edge with the water. So it just gets all of that no fibers poking out, nothing. It gets a really nice, clean edge on the satin stitching. Okay. Claudia X, the fonts I recommend with Applique Alley. They're called Sugar, Sugar Cakes is the name of the, the, um, applique alphabet that I like. And then snack cakes is the name of the cute little like add on appliques that you can um, add to the lettering. Like you can either replace a letter with one of the little pictures um, or you can make them like surround your letter or something. They have, they do so many cute things with it. But yeah, sugar cake and snack cake. But just go to their website and look at their fonts. They're all there. They're all gorgeous. Okay. Um, okay, Angela. On the Can Snaps website, there, there's two options for the plastic snaps. I have what's called the, what is it called? I'll get my little tray out. I'll show you. Um, it's one where they have one option. That's like the professional one where it has a different, the, t the, the die, the top, it has a different piece for the male version of the snap versus the female version for the snap. It is. So every time, if you do this part of it, you put in a die you press it, then you have to take that die out and put in a different die to do this one. I did not get that one. I got one that's universal for both the male and female parts of the snap. Um, once I look at my thing, I'll tell you the name of it. Um, then that's all you need for the dies. And then I like to get the extra long plastic snaps because when you have to go through two layers of vinyl, the regular length snaps they're too short and you don't get a good hold on it so i get the extra long snaps and the um it stays a lot it goes through those two layers of vinyl and holds it a lot better all right that is it i got a nice clean edge on everything it's nice and stiff and 
I can take my, I'll use my tweezers to pull my ribbon through. And now I have a cute little bag tag. All right, let me show you. I have a whole, I have a snap problem. I have lots of, lots of problems here. <laughs> this is my snap collection of things. So what do we have? This, let's see what it's called. Here we go. No change, size 20, plastic snap die. It's this one. No change, size 20. That's what you need. And it'll come with the piece that screws in the top. And this is where you don't have to change. It'll do the male or the female. And then this is the part that holds the flat bottom part. So it'll press it like this in the thing. So that's what you need for your table press. If you have the, the table press or the handheld professional press, this is what you need. And then they have the, um, the hole cutting dies for, I got all the different sizes. I got grommets, I got rivets. I have a problem. And then these are the extra long snaps. You see the little, the little pointy edge is longer than the regular size. And that helps get through those two layers of um, vinyl. And then this is a bunch of hardware for the key fobs and the, the rings. So I'm showing y'all this is here show and tell again, <laughs> all of my things. All right, let's go back here. Oh no, Wolf Guys. Hi. <laughs> you forgot about us? It's okay. You could always watch the replay. But this is what we made. Oh wait, I need to cut my ribbon. Okay. We made a cute little bunny bag tag. And this one came out a lot better because I picked a much better color for the name. <laughs> much, much better. All right. Let's see. Ooh, she's making beaded spiders for her expo. I want to see them. Show me pictures. Ah, Brenda has a really good point. Q-tips work well to clean the edges. You can dip a Q-tip in water and then rub the edges with the wet Q-tip and that will clean it up nicely. Um, our paintbrush from the dollar store, really good. All right, yay, I'm glad y'all like it. So super cute. Lots of Lots of ways you can do this and, and whatever works best for you, use embroidery vinyl, use craft foam, use quilt batting, um, use uh, two, I did two layers of cutaway stabilizer on either side that made it nice and thick. You can leave the paper on the heat and bond. <laughs> There's all kinds of ways that you can do to make this to be a little, a little on the stiffer side so that it, it looks, um, it stays nice and stiff as a tag. So that is our project for tonight. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, oh, before I forget, we had a giveaway, right? So let's see. I have to figure out how to do this. Um, so anyone that commented, liked, thumbs up, shared, all those things automatically got entered into a giveaway tonight. And you're getting a free month of my membership club with CF fans. And that includes a, a free Zoom class with me and a free embroidery design every month and some behind the scenes stuff of what's going on in my craft room. So let me see how to do this because I forgot to do this last time. Giveaway tool. Okay. All right. So we got 94 entries according to this. So let's draw. Oh, that's cool. It shows it all. Terry, <laughs> Terry, I don't remember if you're a member already, but Terry is my favorite quilting friend. So Terry, you are the winner. Um, if you are already a member, then I'm going to refund you for a month. But if not, send me an email to, where is my email? My email is hello at carlybell.com 
and I will get you set up in the CF Fans Membership Club, and you can come make some things with me. We just did, what did we do? This past month, we did a Mylar project. This was the design for the month, was this um, four-leaf clover as a sketch uh, motif fill design, and we put Mylar underneath it. So that was our class for this month. And then we also did a deep dive into Stitch Artist Level 2. We did this past Monday. So if you are a member, you can go back and watch the replays for those videos if you missed them, and you can go download your free design on the CF Fans homepage. If you're interested in joining CF Fans, I have a link down below. Um, if you'd like to join, it's $9 a month, and that helps support me and my channel and my craft supply habit problem <laughs> so that I could do more of these projects for y'all. And we have the free class and free embroidery design every month for our members. So thanks so much guys for joining tonight. I appreciate y'all. Yay. Thanks Joe. I'm glad you enjoyed watching tonight. So go use your coupon code. Let's remind everybody of the coupon code. So today, Applique Alley has a 50% off automatically coupon. So if you're watching today, Friday, April 1st, and by tonight, you'll get 50% off your purchase. But if you're watching the replay on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, next week, um, use coupon code Carly Bell to save 45% off your entire order with the exception of the new releases. Those are already on sale. And this coupon expires next Wednesday, April 6th at 11.59 p.m. So... Yay. Thank y'all so much. I really had fun tonight. These are super fun. Now I'm finally going to get around to making the dancing bag tags. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Let's see if I get it done though. Cause I always say I'm going to do these things. When the girls had their dance review, um, the good moms, the moms that are on top of things have a little gift for all the little girls in, in their daughter's class. If I get my act together, Maybe I can make all the little girls the dancing themed bag tag with their name on it for the review. It's in June. Can I make it happen? We will see. <laughs> we will see if I can actually get it done. Oh, Wendy, we got we to gotta get you hooked up. Okay. Um, I will help get you fixed to get in the, the fan club. Um, just email me that link below. Hello at carlybell.com. And we will try to get it fixed. Yay, Cynthia and Claudia. You could do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I keep, I, I have so many, what do you call UFOs? Or it's not even UFOs. It's not even projects that are unfinished. It's projects I haven't even started yet that are on my list of that I want to do that I, ha I haven't even started it yet. That's my problem. I won't even probably get started, much less start it and then not finish it. Usually when I start something, I'll finish it. And that's what I like about a lot of these projects is um, like I'm, I'm trying to tackle a quilt. That's really hard for me because it's, it's a long process. But these in the hoop projects, monogramming something, applicating a shirt, those I'm going to, I'm going to finish it when I start it, right? It only takes about an hour or two, depending on how much I talk. <laughs> and I can, I'll get it. I'll get it done from start to finish. But um, those longer projects, those get me. I'm not always great at those. Okay. Norma had a question. Our next sip and stitch. So yes, April 15th is Good Friday. So we're going to take off um, on Easter weekend. So no sip and stitch on Good Friday. We will be back April 29th. Let me check my calendar. Yes, April 29th, we will be back. So it'll be a while. So I hope everyone has a good Easter. Um, and on the 29th, I want to do a Mother's Day project. And I haven't figured it out exactly, but what I have in my head is I want to do an embroidered greeting card for Mother's Day. That's what I want, but I just haven't figured out what design I'm doing yet. <laughs> and uh, so that's, that's the plan. So come back April 29th, Friday, 7 p.m. Central Time, and we'll be doing our next Sip and Stitch project. And then after that, it'll be every two weeks, every other Friday, we get together. And now it's on Facebook and YouTube. So 
Yay. Thanks so much, Emily, again, for, um, for working with me. And um, I'm glad I, we love your designs. We love your bag tags and definitely want to collaborate again. I want to do snack cakes. I have, I, I love the back to school ones. So maybe back to school or if I get my act together, maybe um, the cute patriotic ones for, for 4th of July. So we got to definitely get back together and do some snack cakes for Sip and Stitch. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, remember, you can always um, reach me on Facebook. I have um, a page there. You can message me. Please come join us in my Facebook group if you're not, not already a member. There should be a link down below. And, um, and oh, the email newsletter. I send out an email news newsletter every week telling you what's going on, what the next Sip and Stitch is going to be, uh, embroidery tips designs I'm digging, um, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and if you ever have any questions, you can email me. So um, I thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you have a great weekend, a happy Easter, and I will see y'all on the 29th of April next time. Okay. Bye everybody.